Tonight's guest lecturer, Professor Takako Murakami, will be addressing the subject of the essential qualities of Japanese space and the concept of her chair designs, as well as running her own practice, which informs me was the first all-woman design office to be set up in Japan some 30 years ago. She has, throughout her career, taught at numerous universities in Japan and the USA, and is currently the Professor of Art and Design at the Nagoya University of Arts. Her design work embraces both the private and the public sector. What makes her work different from many of the contemporary furniture designers? <laughs> what makes her work different from many of the contemporary furniture designers is that most of her commissions have been to design within a given and specific spatial context. This has meant a close working relationship with architects. Her main objective is not for the furniture to be pronounced, but the design should achieve the same quality as its architectural space. In 1963, she graduated in both design and architecture at the Kyoto, Univers Kyoto Institute of Technology. Thereafter, she spent two years at the Royal Danish Academy of Arts studying under Professor Ori Wansho and Paul Cajon. It was at this time she became aware of the different perception between Japanese space and European space. This subject, particularly in the context of furniture design, has been her main interest throughout her career and is the subject of tonight's lecture. Professor Mukami. Thank you. First of all, I must say thank you very much for Mr. Saito and AA School of Architecture to uh, give me the opportunity to talk to you about my furniture design. And uh, I would like to start a little bit talking about myself because I am a furniture designer who given up the furniture design at my first stage. <laughs> so I must to tell you why. And uh, I just started a uh, study in uh, Japan, and uh, i really interested in the furniture design and especially chair design. And uh, I look back the history of chair design in Japan, and it's, I can go back uh, nearly 200 years then, we have nothing in Japan, and I must go back to European uh, furniture design history. So that's why I went to Denmark to study in, uh, some culture and furniture design on my young uh, period. And then I found out very, very different culture between Denmark and Japan. That is my start point. And also, on that time, I can say I quit to design, chair design, <laughs> at first. But anyway, uh, i still interested in furniture. I'm still interested in uh, chair design. So I started look back my culture, Japanese culture. And so I, uh, based on, I started to base on uh, my design of Japanese space and uh, what is different between Japanese space and European space. Because uh, when I was young in Japan, we have no chairs at all in housing, and I grown up without Cheers. So, what is my basis for chair design? So, I look back the quality of Japanese space. So, I would like to talk, start with what is Japanese culture and what is Japanese space and what is essence in it. And so uh, I must say, talk about a little bit about Japanese culture. And uh, we have a long history 
but Japanese uh, uh, situated in the very uh, east part of uh, Asian country, and our uh, country has many influence from outside of the country, like China, Korea, and European country, and USA. In this moment, contemporary culture is very look like uh, United States culture in this moment. But underneath of our culture, we still have different influence from <coughs> other countries and also primitive culture itself. So I can say uh, very different culture I have or we have to compare your culture. So I want to start with that point of view. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, what happens? Can I reverse? Okay. So uh, Japanese culture is uh, really, um, really based on the seasons. And Japan is an uh, island, a uh, very long island from north to south. And we have uh, situated in monsoon area. Uh, so uh, we have very different four seasons and this season changes nearly three months exactly I can say exactly three months and this four season has a very different uh, quality so just I want to start with spring and uh, cherry blossoms in Japan And this is spring, and spring has a very nice uh, feeling for Japanese people. And uh, Japanese crazy about the looking at uh, cherry blossoms and drinking sake under it, <coughs> under the flower. It's like very much. But this. Sakura season is only, I can say, only one week. So it will go on very quickly. And they, then it's a little bit coming of humidity and the temperature is going up and bamboo is coming out. We eat bamboo shoot. And sometime before summer, we have a rain, which is very rainy seasons, but it's in uh, one month or so. It's a very, very hot and humid summer came. And we have uh, many festivals in the summertime. It's very, very nice seasons, hot and humid, but so many things happen. It's an exciting season in summer too. <coughs> so um, sometimes we're getting tired of this humid and hot uh, climate. Soon we can have a very beautiful autumn. It's, uh, uh, that's maple tree town to live in so beautifully. Like that. So moon and uh, um, sky become very, very clear in the autumn. Then the moon looks very, very beautifully. And we have moon festival in autumn too. Then harvest. And winter came. So we can divide four seasons and 
it means everything will change in three months. That is our culture. So changing, something changing is something of a sense. So these four seasons uh, feeling of changing is very, very important for Japanese and for important Japanese culture. Then uh, something food, something to eat. And Japanese eating also very uh, seasons are uh, affecting. So I show some dishes. And so many things come, and uh, seasons materials coming up. And also, cooking way is uh, different. Sometimes boiling and uh, fry and steaming and soup is coming together in one time. And we eat hot things and cold things and uh, sometimes a mixed one. And very, it is very important for us to do different things put together in one time. And also all should be perfect in season. So this is summertime. We eat raw fishes and maybe this looks like calamari or something but on the eyes. And uh, this is raw fish. But also next dishes will fry and very different taste. So between we eat uh, dishes, we drink uh, some Japanese tea or sake to fresh inside of the mouth. So we can uh, taste very, very different way in one time. This also very uh, Japanese-like, I think, Japanese culture, I think. So it's also key word is changing. Wow. And this is a six years ago earthquake in the Hansen area. We had a big damage by earthquake. And uh, as someone says, 20, 38 days a year were strong earthquake in somewhere in Japan. So earthquake is very, very common for us. And uh, this year we had a lot of earthquake. But this is very st a strong one and uh, uh, damage is like that, you can see. It's terrible. And so we have lots of natural disaster also in Japan. This is earthquake. And also every year we have a big typhoon. This is a photograph still of an earthquake in the Hansen area. And uh, we have a typhoon and lots of rain also. And this is photograph is a very last year we had a big flood as water coming from the river. So the, this is a, some photograph from inside the houses. And sometimes yes we have. I mean, maybe I can say once in fifty years we have such a damage somewhere in our island. So this is the inside of the house. 
after the part. It's, it looks terrible. So, in a way, and the Japanese cannot believe in eternity. Sometime something will change some day. So that is a key word of the Japanese culture, I think. We cannot believe in eternal uh, construction or something. Something gone and something will disappear. That is a way of thinking for Japanese. I think that's why some Buddhism is flourished in Japan. So our culture is like that. So uh, please think about that concept we have. And then I want to start a little bit of Japanese uh, space. So in that way of thinking, Japanese, uh, uh, what was space, began to very uh, natural way, and uh, just put on the pillar and uh, put on the roof. That is our architecture. So you can understand so different from your culture and your architecture. So this is a good example for the primitive uh, space for of Japanese. And the Japanese space is like that. So and, um, we have a lot of um, holy spirits in nature. And also we have uh, many holy spirits inside of the house. So Space should be open to the outside, I think. So Japanese space is uh, open to outside and we have no uh, boundary between outside and inside. That is a, some character of Japanese space. So you can see this is a so simple, just a pillar and floor and ceiling and roof. It's Japanese space like. So uh, very important things for Japanese space is I can say transparency. It means uh, air going through from outside to inside and also inside to outside. So, in a way, this is also architecture in Japanese way of saying. So air is going through and uh, transparency keeping is that the I think some characteristic for the architecture in Japan. So I put on this one is uh, Mr. Ando's building, and this is very old uh, temples in Japan. So please look at the same, some quality of through the ear and the transparency between outside and inside. So always Japanese loves and the air is going through from outside to inside, because we had a very, very humid and hot summer. So we cannot keep uh, without air flow. 
So something through air through is a good, and stagnation or staying something is not good. So you know, I can change the word. Changing is means a good things for Japanese, but not changing, meaning a very bad things for Japanese. So as a light. So this is a very old. Uh, this photograph is very old in uh, Gosho um, Palace, and also the other side is a uh, architect Mr. Hara's new building for Kyoto Station. I think it's uh, they have the same quality still. Is the same one is a very old temple in Kyoto called Sanju Sangendo, and also the other is uh, Mr. Hara's Kyoto Station. And air is the same. When I go there to the temple and go through the Kyoto Station, it's a feeling of the air is the same. So that kind of um, transparency mean you know? Excuse me. So this is uh, some, uh, also the same um, Sanju Sangendo temple. It's nearly, I can say, 900 years old. And uh, this also, the, the very transparent space. So please look at the uh, find out the same quality of the air in the old old architecture and new architecture. Oh. Thank you. And it is also the, some temple staircase and uh, Kyoto Station staircase by Mr. Hara. And always I feel I'm not architect. I'm a furniture designer, and so but always interested in the space. And no, I always feeling and uh, same quality of the space between the modern architecture in Japan and old architecture in Japan. 
So, uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, living in Kyoto and I've grown up in Kyoto. So, I can uh, visit both of the uh, places in the same day. So, I really feel something same in modern and old. And uh, Mr. Andrew's building and uh, Golden Temple. <laughs> So what mean uh, transparency? I mean, this is came from some gardening in Japan, and the uh, gardener uh, take care of the trees and uh, took over some uh, branches every e and once in a year to keeping the air through. That meaning uh, transparency. That is very very important for us to going through the air. So like that, and gardeners is working for, to keeping the form and still an air through of the trees. And same things I can say in inside of the space also. So, that's why we can keep such a uh, beautiful space. And that's just transparency, so, and the air goes through. And one more, I think it's uh, very characteristic in Japanese space, is uh, shadow. I can say light and shadow, but uh, shadow is more important than the light in Japan. So, As you know, and Mr. Tanizaki wrote about plays of shadow. That is very good book about Japanese shadow and uh, right in, inside of the houses. And uh, in ka Japanese uh, loved long, long time with the moonlight. And the moonlight is the reflected light and not direct light. So. In, I, I can say Japanese has a special sense for the um, reflected light than uh, direct light. And th when the direct light coming through the, uh, in, uh, into the room, it's a Japanese uh, paper used, and direct light become uh, some um, softened very soft light and very equal quality, what can I say, is a homogeneous uh, light to the space that also the Japanese loves very much. So, shadow also very important for us in a space. So this is some calligraphy from called Mr. Tessai. It's a very famous uh, calligrapher. So this is black and white. Uh, as uh, some uh, sense of Japanese uh, uh, space quality. So I put on this uh, slider here too. And one more thing I want to say for to you about Japanese space is it's very important space is uh, something between between outside and inside we have a special space because Japanese uh, architecture is just uh, put uh, with a pillar and put on the very and shaped uh, sharp angled uh, roof and it is made a very special uh, space. This is, I'm, I'm saying this is between space, <laughs> between. 
So it's not so much function, but it is very, very important for the Japanese space quality, I think. So no function but the quality, I can say. So, and also Japanese love this kind of space just between. So air through and uh, shadow and light and something between the uh, out and in. It's a very essential quality of Japanese faith, I think. Again, that's a uh, Mugan architecture is Mr. Ando's architecture. So this is uh, between the out and in, and uh, this kind of space is very characteristic in Japan. But, but very, very important for us. So you can see through and also air going through. At no, not so much function, but very important space. So, um, Japanese architecture using a very few materials, I can say. Uh, Sometimes uh, people say Japanese architecture is made by wood and uh, art and paper. Yes, it's really so. Uh, and also, um, few, very, very few materials we are using, but um, we love the shadow or darkness. So our sense of the body is uh, very keen to the uh, space be because when we are living the naked foot inside of the house. It makes very um, sensitive for the space, I think. And Japanese material is very few, but that uh, finishing of the texture or way of using is very, very um, different, and we have many finishing of the materials. So, in a way, body sense is very keen, and uh, that way I am very interested in the Japanese space and relation of my furniture. This is a mood and an old. And uh, this is a between space in a town and in the architecture. English gentleman in the <laughs> space between. <laughs> he is very high, at the two meter high. <laughs> <laughs> 
So maybe the proportion of the architecture, I think you can understand how different <laughs> we say you are your space and Japanese space. <laughs> and also the materials are so very few. So that's why um, I talk about Japanese space because I said I quitted or I given up uh, chair design long time ago, but I love chair design. I want to be chair designer. And then I started to think about what is the concept of my chair. So I started to study Japanese space and uh, I want to uh, design the chair for the Japanese space. And the Japanese space is like that, so uh, fun, the relation between furniture and the Japanese architecture is not so um, strong, you know. Japanese architecture is almost completed without furniture. So we use furniture and uh, it depends on what we are doing inside of the room. So our uh, room has a multi-function. So I want to write a letter. I put on the small table and start writing the letter. And I want to eat something. I bring a, some, a small table again and uh, to eating something. And guests coming in, I put on the cushions, then a cup over the tea sub that become a guest room. And then when I want to sleep, I put on the futon in the same room, then it becomes sleeping room. That is a, a function of a Japanese room. So in a way, Japanese room doesn't need furniture, <laughs> doesn't need chairs. So I started. Of course, in uh, contemporary uh, life, nobody uh, can uh, live without furniture. But still, I want to keep this beauty of Japanese traditional space, and also uh, I want to design some chairs for the Japanese space. So I found out m my chair should be very uh, same quality of Japanese essential space and uh, same construction and simple construction and air flow and also if they not necessary it should be easily very easily put away that is my concept so it's maybe very different from you I think um, I will show some of my works uh, as a furniture designer. Yes, I am doing furniture design. Um, but always I'm thinking uh, it should be simple and simple construction and the uh, same quality to the space and uh, air through or something like that, what I said. And also it should be a way when not necessary. So these uh, looks like uh, European chairs, and also these uh, chairs I designed for the one project with uh, uh, architect. So I always uh, started design the furniture. I knew the space, what will be. So uh, that is very important to understand the space first. Then I started to think about the chairs. This is the table. This is a little bit like Macintosh. I, <laughs> I was in, very influenced by Macintosh in young age. So. 
and those also uh, the project for the Japanese hotels. <coughs> then I started to the chair design for traditional Japanese rooms. So I told before, and it should be a way when it's not necessary. So this uh, is a knockdown system, and also seat height is very low. As you know, in the Japanese space is very a different proportion of yours, and also we are living without uh, shoes and sitting straight on the tatami mat for uh, before. So eye level is very important to look at the Japanese face. Uh, low point of view is uh, the best for the, I think, uh, Japanese uh, room. So I always thinking about very, very low seat height. That And all these chairs can be put away very, very easily. So I designed the chair, and uh, I hoping to keeping uh, the, that kind of uh, Japanese. Uh, traditional style still in a way in the contemporary apartment is very dull in Japan <laughs> and very ugly so I want to keep this beauty in Japanese living uh, to uh, design the kind of chair for the young people and also this uh, uh, continuing this way of thinking, I'm very interested in uh, that the space and chair can do something together. And uh, I do want to um, try to do something with very, very European uh, space and my furniture. Then I start to think about an, uh, something to do with uh, European space. And fortunately, I could uh, have a permission to use in the Roman space in uh, cathedral in autumn in France, and they allowed to me to put on my chair. So I start to design, and uh, cathedral means uh, uh, some very spiritual, and uh, very religious space. And also I want to do something for them in some Japanese culture has. So I started thinking about the Zen Buddhist. Zen priest uh, have a time to concentrate. So I started to make furniture for Zen priest to concentrate to their uh, So this is a rather unique furniture for sitting position. This, is lota this should be the lotus position on this chair, and I put on the name, the form for the play. Then, and also, it's flexible and uh, easy to take part.
So at the end of this slide, I would like to show some of my uh, experiment in uh, cathedral in Northern, just to look and what you feel. I don't say so much things. Please look at it. So this is European architecture. Very strong and your European space. Different from Japanese one. This is my uh, trial <laughs> to the uh, European architecture or European space. And I think I could do something and I could create new um, space together with my chair and my Roman uh, space. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Murakami. Are there any questions? No question? If there are no questions, I'd like to thank Professor Murakami again for coming and talking to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much.